Aloha and thank you for joining us today. The group project that you will see today will be about the Amazon case study. Our group name is Shop A to Z and comprises of four group members, Macy, Aisha, Jackson, and Terry Liu. There are four bullet points for our project process. UH Gmail was utilized as primary communication between group members. Google Docs used for building content of the group project. Google Drive used for building the presentation of the group project. Local hard drive was used for converting PowerPoint to MP4. Our project procedures also comprise of four bullet points. Each team member chose one section to focus on within the chapter and created PowerPoint slides accordingly. Team members with longer sections received help from members with shorter sections. Everyone helped in putting together the PowerPoint as a finished product. Team members volunteered and then chose who would convert the PowerPoint presentation to an MP4. Let me briefly introduce the founder behind the Amazon e-commerce giant. Jeff Bezos was the founder of Amazon. He founded Amazon July 5, 1994. Originally, he was looked down upon by industry research firms. In the early years, Amazon stock price dropped. However, currently, Amazon is the largest online retailer. Amazon's number one selling item is Amazon's Kindle. Why study Amazon, you might ask? Here are some simple answers to that question. Amazon adheres to critical management concepts like cash efficiency and channel conflict. Its Kindle business is of key importance for mobile computing. It is a part of our media consumption, and the Kindle distribution channel for sales and advertising is thriving. Likewise, Amazon's web service is a powerhouse cloud provider and they are also selling services to rivals. Amazon is the e-commerce emperor. Amazon's humble beginnings started with selling books online. Their first office was a modest basement. Today, the company has over 90 distribution centers worldwide. Amazon is currently the world's largest online retailer with dozens of categories. The stylized smile in the Amazon logo doubles as an arrow pointing from A to Z, as in, we carry everything from A to Z. The secret to Amazon's competitive edge are their three pillars of business. Vast selection, customer experience, also referred to as convenience, and lower prices that enhance competitive advantage to generate additional assets. Exceptional customer service drives the Amazon brand as the first place most consumers shop online. More satisfied customers allow the firm to offer more products, creating scale. Amazon struggled with efficiency problems in the beginning of its operation. To remedy that, Amazon sought out talents externally by hiring away Walmart CIO and CLO while reconfiguring its warehouse and technology infrastructure. The acronym CRAP meant simply as can't realize any profit, referred to the lengthy shipping process in the warehouses. In a positive attempt to cleave inefficiency costs, Amazon worked with their vendors to have products pre-packaged. Amazon's warehouse profit-pushing, hyper-efficient technology is unparalleled. Receipt of shipment from a supplier is received within hours of its arrival. Product defects are identified by a staffer, then passes that defect on to another staffer deemed the problem solver to continue the efficiency cycle. Top-selling items like the Kindle and best-selling books are held on pallets for fast pickup. Slow-selling items are coded by Amazon's warehouse system with a unique shelf code and shelved in an open space. The same item could be stored in various areas of the same warehouse with a system that keeps precise record of it all. 
To reduce errors and keep customers happy, Amazon has a rule for stocking shelves. No two similar products can sit next to each other. Warehouse pickers build customer orders using wireless devices to provide exact location instructions, enabling a picker to navigate through the maze of aisles and shelves. Shelf codes are scanned after item retrieval, which then triggers the device with the next order for the picker. Warehouse software plots the picking path to minimize worker steps and maximize order fulfillment efficiency. Problem solvers roam the warehouse as observers to provide workers coaching as an added measure to improve efficiency. A completed order is placed in an orange bin that would travel on a conveyor belt for packing. Software then tells packing associates the appropriate box for packing. The same software can inform the packing associate if a box is too light as an additional check of what's expected. Stamped with names and addresses on the box by the system after being sealed, packets box are separated in trays that ride another conveyor belt system where they are scanned to head to its correct chute for proper routing onto the correct truck. Amazon has begun embracing automation. If a 99.9% .9 delivery rate isn't enough, Amazon has ventured into automation by piloting Kiva Robotics in the warehouse of their subsidiary, Zappos. A Kiva robot has an estimated pick rate of 200 to 400 items per hour. Earlier in the presentation, I mentioned Amazon's cash conversion cycle. Let's take a look at that cycle right now. Financial benefits from speed provide Amazon its advantage over brick and mortar retailers. Amazon competitors suffer inefficiently in three areas, account payables, their cash conversion cycle, and liquidity problems. Amazon's cash conversion cycle is simple. It sells goods and collects money from customers weeks before it has to pay its suppliers. This advantage provides an additional pool of cash available for expanding operations, investing, and more. This helps Amazon to keep inventory turn high and pay suppliers later. Amazon's cost structure for operations is superior to that of rivals. Brick and mortar retail giants like Walmart and Target each have over 1,700 stores worldwide, while Amazon has 90 plus warehouses and no conventional stores. Therefore, competitor sales will eclipse Amazon's. Conversely, Amazon overhead costs are in no comparison to those of its competitors. Amazon's spend expenditure is best utilized on software, automation, expansion, real estate, energy, inventory, and security. Employee efficiency at Amazon is higher and constant with sales while retailer activity ebb and flows based on customer foot traffic. Fierce competition between retailers and e-commerce giants like Amazon rely mostly on pricing power. Same product offering among retailers and e-commerce giants present the market with fierce competition as consumers shop solely on the lowest price. Amazon can sustain lower prices where the competition could not. Likewise, small firms could not survive a price fight with Amazon. Amazon's other businesses allow them to withstand an unprofitable price war. Amazon's retail prices aren't just cheaper than other e-commerce firms, they're usually cheaper than larger rivals. Wells Fargo reported that Walmart prices were 19% more expensive than that of Amazon. Target was 28% more expensive than Amazon. Amazon monitors competitor stockouts as an opportunity to earn more. When rivals sold off of an item, Amazon raised prices at an average of 10%. Despite stockout advantage, consumers are not blind to dynamic pricing by Amazon and other retailers. However, 
Data shows that consumers' nimble response is a typical aspect of the competitive landscape. Amazon Scale allowed it to create product lines it had branded itself, such as the Amazon Basics, Pinzon, Strathwood, Pike Street, and Nanali. These are the beginning lines for Amazon. There are more to be released in the coming years. Having its own brand of high volume products allow Amazon to cut out costs that would otherwise go to our branded supplier. Firms unwilling to provide price breaks, payment terms, or complete product line access it demands, we see direct competition with Amazon's private label product. Amazon's private labels reduce scale by shrinking the gaps of best price and product offering with competitors. CEO Jeff Bezos' allegiance to Amazon customers is proof of the company as primarily focused on only the customer. Every two years, every employee from Bezos on down must spend two days on the service desk answering customer calls. Amazon pioneered efforts to improve customer experience, such as one-click ordering, customer reviews, recommendations, bundles, look and search inside the book, where's my stuff, and free super saver shipping. Amazon continually scores the highest rating for customer service experience on the University of Michigan's American Customer Service Index, beating out all other internet retailers of any firm in the service industry. Data is important to Amazon. Data helps Amazon to perfect its customer service experience as well as every aspect within the company. Having scale allowed Amazon to amass a profoundly valuable tech-derived competitive resource data. Firms with the most customers enable it to accurately understand various patterns such as preferences to price tolerance and more. At Amazon, data can win arguments. Employees can challenge senior managers and even Bezos himself. Such challenges present ideas in which to grow the firm. An idea proposed by an Amazon coder was previously shot down by a senior vice president. Persistence paid off when an A-B test to capture customer response on a best option from two product choices proved to drive revenue. Testing and experience are important to Amazon in order to generate important data to improve customer experience and company efficiency. Simple activity triggered by a customer can impact Amazon's ROI, also known as return on investment. A-B tests drive customers from product evaluation to checkout. Tests modified and compared many variables, including keywords associated with images and buttons, screen placement, and more. Customer activity drove the firm's decision to heavily invest in infrastructure. A-B testing has proven to be valuable to e-commerce firms over conventional retailers. Amazon's data trove on you individually and users collectively fueling the firm's personalization effort. Amazon tracks your surfing behavior and your buying history. At any time that you access Amazon, you're probably visiting your Amazon homepage. Amazon knows what you like and dislike. Collaborative filtering software compares user data with other users' data to map a best guess of what you like to see each time you visit. All of this customer data has positioned Amazon to grow a massive ad business. Amazon sold ads to generate more sales through its website. It now offers advertisers the ability to advertise on Kindles, IMDB, within mobile apps, and via Amazon targeted ads on third-party websites. Amazon reportedly charges up to $1 million for ads placed on the welcome screen of the new Kindle Fire. Kindle buyers can opt for an ad-free version for an extra $20 more. Amazon offers products provided by others alongside its own listings. 
third-party products are referred as being part of the Amazon Marketplace. Amazon does not own inventory of Marketplace items. Sellers can warehouse and ship products themselves, or they can opt to use Amazon's warehouse as part of the Fulfilled by Amazon program. Amazon handles all of the logistics of the order, while customers get Amazon shipping prices that include super saver discounts and free shipping for Amazon Prime members. Customers also benefit if they already have a credit card and profile on file with Amazon that deters users from going to a new site. As much as 40% of all units sold by Amazon are from the firm's 2 million participating Amazon Marketplace sellers worldwide. Marketplace allows Amazon to build its product offerings without the cost and risks of ownership of unproven or slow-moving inventory. The firm reaps the reward of a two-sided network effect, where more buyers attract more sellers and more sellers attract more buyers. Competition between marketplace products and Amazon's own offerings reinforce competition that can offer customers low prices without having to shop outside of Amazon. Amazon will collect the fee even if a rival wins a sale when the product sells through Amazon. When a third-party good is sold through Amazon, it continues to own much of the customer relationship of that sale. Valuable data to the firm if the customer decided to shop elsewhere. Amazon will kick out sellers with bad ratings to ensure quality and protect the Amazon brand. Amazon Associates Program is the world's largest affiliate marketing program that offers a finder's fee for generating sales. These fees are paid for performance as associates get a commission based on sales generated from the promotion. Amazon fosters the Amazon addiction. Amazon has created habit-changing behaviors to fuel sales and continued growth. Amazon Prime subscribers receive incentives such as free two-day shipping for unlimited qualifying purchases. Amazon's mobile commerce has impacted buying patterns with easy accessibility with its app. Analysts suspect sales via mobile access may be as high as 10% and rising. Acquisition of other firms and the growth of internal businesses enable Amazon to absorb potentially threatening competitors, experiment with product offerings and services, and integrate value-added businesses and technologies into the Amazon empire. Amazon has begun growing its own brands in new categories. My Habit is a flash sale site. Amazon Instant Video is for streaming, television, and movie titles for rental or purchase. Amazon Fresh is a fresh direct light competitor offering same day or next day delivery of groceries and more. Amazon has begun to build warehouses in major metropolitan areas to target growing same day delivery. They previously had warehouses in low population areas to avoid tax laws. But with the transition to metro warehouses, Amazon must surrender to sales taxes that force the e-commerce giant to launch an all-out assault on markets handled by local retailers. Amazon's Kindle can be seen as partially responsible for the rise of the digital age. More than one-third of Amazon's total revenue is derived from the sale of media-based business, which includes books, music, and video. The creation of the Kindle, a reading digital tool, allows Amazon's 150 million customers to have easy and round-the-clock access to any and all products that Amazon offers. The Kindle arrives linked to the customer's Amazon account instantly, connecting the consumer with the firm's entire industry of physical products. The Kindle is referred to as a pre-configured cash register. Due to Moore's Law, Amazon has been able to lower the price of Kindle offerings while increasing the functionality of the device. The Kindle has proven widely successful. By the product's second year, the Kindle was Amazon's top-selling product in both dollar volume and unit sales. 
Amazon doesn't focus on making money directly from Kindle hardware sales, but instead focuses on e-commerce sales made on the Kindle. According to RBC Capital, each Kindle Fire generates over $136 in operating income, with operating margins about 20% over the lifetime of the device. The Kindle platform creates several advantages like network effects, switching costs, and user data. The Kindle has turned a device into a storefront. Amazon has significantly changed the publishing value chain and has changed the entire cost structure of the industry. At the time of the Kindle's rise, six large publishers controlled 60% of the U.S. book business. For authors looking to bring books to market through Amazon, Amazon offers royalty options ranging from 35 to 70%, which is much higher than the 20% they receive through traditional publisher. There is a great cost advantage bringing books to market through Amazon since digital publishing work does not require printing, shipping, and shelf stocking. As Amazon's potential and dominance continues to rise, many competing firms view Amazon as a threat. Amazon and partners have in turn become victim of channel conflict when other retailers have dropped its offering. For example, firms like Barnes & Noble, Target, and Walmart have stopped carrying Kindles as well as books that carry titles from Amazon's publishing firm. However, since Amazon scale continues to grow, authors and providers of other goods may not care that working with Amazon will cut off other distribution channels. The winner in channel conflict is the firm or group that offers greater value to conflicted partners. Amazon in the cloud. Amazon offers personal cloud storage to its customers for all forms of media, including books, games, music, and video, as well as file storage similar to those of Dropbox and Google Drive. It is popular among users because it allows them to access files from any app, browser, or device with appropriate access. Another interesting feature Amazon offers is retroactively loading digital copies of customer CDs and vinyl record purchases into their cloud player account. What is Amazon's biggest cloud push? Offering access to corporate quality computing as a service. What are the advantages of using the cloud? Organizations can rent server capacity as needed, scaling up during high demand periods or intensive short-term projects without having to overinvest in hardware, software, and personnel. Amazon's deep experience in scalability, security, and fault tolerance are much better than what a smaller firm would be capable of developing on their own. Amazon is now offering web service. Amazon's web service allows firms and just about anyone with a credit card to rent reliable industrial strength computing capacity on an as-need basis. So what are Amazon's best known offerings? Easy. One, Amazon EC2, also known as Elastic Computing Cloud, is the virtual equivalent of physical computing software. And two, Amazon S3, Simple Storage Service, that provides web-based storage. Amazon Web Service also provides numerous service offerings that include the following. Various operating systems, database products, enterprise software, programming environments, networking services, and much more. Amazon Web Service powers hundreds of businesses, such as Etsy, Airbnb, Pinterest, Yelp, Zynga, and Instagram. Amazon Web Service allowed 13 guys to get their app out to tens of billions of users, giving it a billion dollar acquisition price in just 15 months. Here's a continuation of more Amazon Web Service greatness. Even firms that view Amazon as rivals 
such as Netflix and Dropbox rely on Amazon's web service. Not only big firms rely on Amazon's web service, but the largest firms in their respective categories rely on Amazon's web service for key tasks, which firms include NASA, Eli Lilly, New York Times Corporation, and ESPN. Although Amazon Web Service has experienced well-known outages that have temporarily taken down or dramatically slowed several sites that use the service, most firms don't feel like they could do a better job at a better price. Therefore, firms are okay with relying on another firm to provide vital resources. Target is a prime case of how sometimes it is better to rely on others to provide resources. After stopping Amazon Web Service from powering their website, it crashed after heavy use due to an unexpectedly popular promotion. Well, we have reached the end of our presentation. It is clear that Amazon is the e-commerce emperor. They are clearly good at what they do. They provide exemplary customer service and surely have efficient operations. Their future is promising as they now offer private label products, cloud and web services. My team, Shop A to Z, Macy, Aisha, Terry Liu, and I, thank you for watching and listening to our presentation today. Mahalo.